Okay, so we're probably um, good to go ahead and get started. Um, I can see that there's probably uh, hard to tell how many, but it looks like uh, 20 some, 20 to 30 some folks logged in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just uh, quickly introduce the um, the contact, provide a context, and then uh, Karen. Uh, is going to take us through a more detailed uh, indication of where we're going with uh, the working group. Um, so I'm, I don't have slides other than the one that you see on your screen. Um, so the, uh, this uh, working group uh, has, this is its first meeting as a working group. Uh, the last time we got together was at the 16th plenary hosted by our colleagues in Costa Rica. And that was a birds of a feather session uh, where Karen uh, focused on the uh, the charter uh, and the uh, tasks that we were looking at uh, setting for ourselves. So the benchmarking working group is a direct uh, spin out from the uh, Global Open Research Commons interest group. And you can see there the six uh, co-chairs of the GORC interest group with Sarah Jones, myself, Karen, uh, Devika, Michelle, and Andrew. Uh, so we have a nice uh, broad cross-section of folks from different contexts. Um, the GORC interest group is uh, later in the uh, schedule tomorrow. Um, so I did want to just provide a very brief context. As I said, the this working group, the benchmarking working group, came out of the conversations at the GORC interest group and that first uh, BO, uh, BOF meeting in last November. Having said that, a lot of the conversations around this uh, Global Open Research Commons in the case of RDA um, is collaborative with other initiatives like the Global Open Science Cloud initiative that uh, CODATA is leading. And a lot of these conversations came out of the last couple of years and in a particular meeting at the IDW in Botswana. Um, so that was uh, that was kind of, a, I suppose, the kickoff for a lot of the efforts that you'll get updates on uh, at the 17th plenary. The, uh, in a sense, even before that, uh, there was a, an interest group in RDA called the National Data Services Interest Group. And that interest group was co-chaired by a number of colleagues. Uh, Adrian Burton, I think, was one of the key uh, members of that National Data Services Interest Group, uh, as well as others. Um, so the so that also generated a lot of discussion around this context of national services and what it means to have national services, and that has merged into the conversation related to the interoperability of these various national data services at the global level. So that's uh, the focus that we have with the current uh, interest group. And uh, as Andrew has just typed into the chat there, there is a link to our collaborative notes. So please, uh, when you get a chance, put your uh, contact details in there so we know who was here. Um, so uh, the primary goal and we'll get down to the brass tacks after Karen's provides additional detail is to pull together uh, interested people to kind of focus in on smaller task groups on particular aspects of the work. So our primary goal today is to try and figure out how to best go forward uh, with that work. Um, so with that background, I'm going to pass it over to you, Karen, okay. uh, to give us more detail. All right. Thank you, Mark. That's really helpful. Um, so I'm assuming somebody's going to shout out if there's any issues with the slide deck. Um, but uh, essentially, going back to the case statement, the original idea of the group is that we wanted to create three deliverables. Um, and I should note that the case statement has been revised uh, a couple, um, since, the, since the original one. Um, but the same idea is still holds, is that we wanted to, to create... Um, a list of observable benchmarks or features or structures or functionality that you would expect to find in a commons. So the existence of a, a data privacy policy, 
federated authentication and authorization, catalog of services, some mechanism to capture provenience, all of these sorts of, uh, I use the term as features or benchmarks um, or services sort of interchangeably on that side. Um, and a set of um, measurements or uh, engagements, metrics that, that uh, indicate that people are engaging with their benchmarks. Um, so the size or the number of data downloads, uh, the number of software commits, the number of HPC cycles, something along those lines, some, some sort of measurable, um, observable property. Um, and then an adoption plan. Um, and, and as Mark mentioned, this group was created largely in support of the GORC interest group. And one of the outcomes of the GORC interest group is meant to be a roadmap for the integration of the commons globally. Um, and so we saw this as feeding feeding into, into that. Um, and so what I, what I want to do is just talk a bit about, um, and for some reason my slide's not working, um, a potential workflow of how we might get there. And, and this is all meant to be a sort of a, very much a straw man sort of discussion um, of, of, of one possible way forward. But we're, what we were hoping to do today is really get your ideas about whether or not this works. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to go through a potential workflow and then we, we can step back and talk about it. But I essentially um, saw the process that we're going to engage in is essentially a sort of a literature review about the commons. And so the first thing I would want to do is get a list, a target list of the commons that we were going to review. Um, in the revised, the, the original case statement, I think had a much larger list. This revised case statement had a, has a smaller list. Um, and I also wanted to, and you can see the, it, there's an appendix in the case statement that lists um, the organizations. There's a couple sticking points in there about who should be on it and who shouldn't. Um, but in addition to that list as a starting point, um, Bridget has put together a contact database um, of, of commons people that we can reach out to and talk to about this. Um, I would like to have a fairly clear vision of what the product is going, uh, going to be at the end of it. In my mind, um, I could imagine a relational database that captures the benchmarks, um, the related commons, the source of the information, um, you know, description possibly of the uh, implementations of certain benchmarks, if we can describe them. Um, and I've mocked up what uh, a relational database might look like, and I can show you that in a larger slide if you're, if you're interested. And again, that would have to be open for discussion to make sure we captured the right information. Um, I, I do think if we're capturing information about benchmarks, if we could uh, align it with the conversation that's going on in the interest group about the topology of the commons, that, that could be very useful. Um, and then uh, we could have an initial discussion where we uh, seed the database with an initial list of benchmarks and KPIs that we would expect to find um, collectively. Um, and then I envision the working group uh, separating out into smaller task groups. Um, and, and again, I've got another, we can talk about possible ways to do that um, in terms of whether we organize ourselves according to you know, region that we are in, um, some sort of expertise about benchmarks or um, you know, something along the line of different commons. However, we, there's a diff couple different ways that we could do that. Um, and then um, we can uh, mock up an online forum so that members of the individual task groups as they go through um, and review information about the commons, um, they can submit a benchmark um, or a KPI or an implementation. Um, and then we would uh, create a slide uh, at, at the regular meetings of the working groups where we um, say, this has been proposed as a benchmark. Um, do we want to wordsmith it a bit? A bit? Um, do we want to uh, accept it? Do we want to reject it? Is it a repeat of, a, of an existing benchmark that we've already approved? But at, at those regular meetings, as we discuss the benchmarks and then we can add them uh, to the database. So behind the scenes, the database is growing, but the form is just a Google form. And in fact, um, we can add us, we can add a link to, we've mocked up something that we think would work for that, or it's a starting point for that anyway. Um, and I should also add that we have a, um, a Zotero instance as well, that we can manage the library of the documents that we're going to review. Um, and then uh, I can imagine we should do some outreach uh, uh, to 
uh, people who are working in the commons as we develop this database that describe essentially their their uh, services, you know, reach back to them, see if they approve of, of how we're describing them. Um, we might have to reach out to some folks who um, have particular expertise about different types of services, somebody that knows more about vocabulary services than I do or something along those lines. So um, there's going to be an outreach component to it. And then um, I see the adoption plan as being sort of the, the last step in the, in the process. Um, and part of that is because I don't have a clear vision of the, of the adoption plan other than in inclusion of that adoption plan into the, um, into the interest group roadmap, as I talked about earlier. So um, that's certainly open for discussion. Um, so that's sort of the, how I, one potential straw man uh, way we can approach this. Um, this is a proposed timeline where I heard over here at RDA 17, um, you know, we could we could start this this uh, organizational process and literature review, um, do some more outreach to the commons in, in about six months time. That may be a little a little um, adventurous. Um, drafting the first uh, benchmarks uh, in advance of RDA 19 and the final benchmarks in uh, to be um, in advance of 20 with the idea of closing out and having the adopt adoption plan um, ready by RDA 20. That may be a pretty um, uh, optimistic timeline. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and then just a couple of ideas about the potential subtask groups that again, um, we could do it by deliverable. So we could have one task group that looked only at the benchmarks um, and the other ones that looked at KPIs and one that looked at an adoption plan. Uh, we could do, we could we could break up by commons uh, once we have the target list, the European Open Science Cloud, the African Open Science Platform, et cetera. Um, we could do it by topology, which is what the interest group is working on, um, by region, uh, depending on the uh, location of where the interest group member is or has an interest in. Um, we could assign, you know, papers sort of as they fell. Um, we could do it by some sort of uh, pillar, uh, data, software, compute, um, or domain. And, and there may be some advantages here of doing a mix, in my mind, of, the, of a domain um, and a commons. So it could be fairly straightforward to organize ourselves by having one group looking at um, the, the European Open Science Cloud, one looking at the Af Australian National Data Service. Um, the earth and life sciences don't have a cohesive sort of governance structure that allows us to talk about them as if they were a commons. So I, th I, I do think that we're gonna have to have a separate task group uh, to look at how we're gonna include the domain um, organizations in that. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, but that was, um, uh, as soon as I figure out how to do that. But that was sort of a straw man sort of idea. I know there's a lot of ideas about there and, and um, we would be interested in knowing how to approach that. Yeah, and Karen, uh, before you stop sharing, you might want to rest on that slide just before the proposed yeah. timeline. Yeah, that um, one. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I interrupted you. No, that's right. Um, I know that was a lot of information and it was, um, I, I uh, yeah, we're just trying to get a sense of whether or not that's off the mark or if that makes sense or if I've um, missed anything in particular. And we've got some larger slides to look at the, the logic of the um, input form or the database or however we want to talk about that. But, but more than anything, I'd like, I, I think the first question I'd like to add was, does this make sense? Is this a, uh, is this a reasonable sort of approach? Yeah, so maybe we can encourage folks to type in the chat or uh, unmute yourself and make any comments or suggestions either on this uh, kind of workflow that Karen has suggested. And as she, I would highlight that Alicia has uh, the most recent link from Alicia that to the actual form, um, or at least the a draft form that would give people a sense of how we would gather content. So maybe we'll just, uh, as I said, pause and see if anybody has any thoughts or comments on the the proposed approach. 
I feel like a really good moderator, I would have had a poll ready to go. Something, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. I think we can uh, can manage here. I did put in examples. I think one of the things that probably uh, causes people to pause, you know, kind of intellectually to get their minds around this is the, um, the nature of the KPIs and, and benchmarks. So I did put in a terribly formatted list from the original charter of the 11 examples that we had put in. Um, but you can see a better version of that in the charter itself. Uh, Mark, can I make a comment? Sure. Um, <clears throat> sorry, Andrew Trelaw from the Australian Research Data Commons. So the target list of commons, um, do you see that as being larger than the list that Bridget's curating? And I should explain the reference to Bridget is a, a project called RDA for EOSC. Uh, and if you're at all interested in that particular project, there's a document that I've just put in chat that describes it. Um, that's probably the best list we're going to be able to get for now, or, or do you see that as a starting point? Yeah, I think Bridget's list was partly based on, or at least initially largely based on the list that Karen had created in the original charter. Um, and I'm not sure how far it's broadened or expanded from there, but I'm, to my mind, the natural uh, outcome as we get these details pulled together is that the list of commons is going to increase, especially in the domain. I think it's the domain context that it could cause it to get a little, a little messy, if you will. Yeah. Yep, I don't. So I have to say, I have not compared um, that output from Bridget. Thank you for, for pointing me to that, Mark, um, to the case statement. And I put a link to the case statement in the chat window. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I do think it's going to be the sort of earth sciences, natural sciences, um, and the health um, uh, life sciences are going to be the most tricky um, and there's there's going to be a lot of different organizations that we need to sort of figure out how we want to represent um but that uh the other ones are fairly straightforward i think in terms of the um uh, who who it is that we envision being part of the review yeah we had originally had a set of vres and um uh, virtual research environments in there that I think we, we're not going to include in this particular uh, structure. Yeah, and Bridget highlighted there that it hasn't expanded beyond that initial list. Um, and there's a question there from Robert about why one would expect diverse research commons to be interoperable. Any comments or thoughts on that? I, I think it's, you know, there's not, so I, in case I haven't said this, it's not meant to be prescriptive of any sense about them being common. I do think that there is a hope of sort of this grand vision of um, any research services being available and interoperable with other research services from around the globe. Um, and maybe that's a big audacious goal that doesn't make sense, but um, I, do, I do think that um yeah I, I i do think there would be value in that having a researcher being able to access you know data or compute resources yeah uh, yeah and i mean robert may want to expand on that if he wants to turn off his audio but from my perspective the obvious opportunities are in discovery of research output so you know clearly in a multidisciplinary interdisciplinary context uh, being able to discover across different uh, jurisdictional boundaries, disciplinary boundaries. I think there's value in, certainly in the discovery context. And then, of course, the discovery context leads to um, access to the data itself, 
access to the individuals that are associated with the data. Uh, so there's all of the things that I think a lot of us uh, strive for in this kind of research data ecosystem would be facilitated with more operable frameworks. Um, Robert, did you want to comment more? Yeah, hi, Mark, and hi, Karen. Hey, Mark. Oh, it's Bob. <laughs> all I said was Robert. <laughs> I've come out of the closet, yeah. Um, but I'm thinking more in terms of, you know, we're talking about nationally funded or internationally funded resources. And, you know, there is, of course, nothing in the United States uh, equivalent to EOSC or to the Australian uh, Research Data Commons. But if there were, um, I would have a, a bit of a hard time understanding why we would make it uh, available to people, you know, who are not part of the U.S. Uh, data ecosystem. I think the idea of sharing, you know, how different uh, commons are architected and, uh, and so forth could be useful for those who are in charge of operating them. But, um, you know, I, I guess I don't quite see um, that it's political, a political reality to have these things really open to everybody. Yeah, I'll just make a quick comment and then Andrew has his hand up. I mean, I, from my perspective, Bob, I understand better where you're coming from now. I just would point to the EOS uh, situation as an example. And if you have a, a, a catalog of services and resources in the EOS context, and there's a service in another cloud, whether it's national or domain specific, that would be a great, a great deal of interest and use to the researchers in that EOS community. Then being able to intersect with that, integrate with that, or interoperate with that on the, to the benefit of the researchers in the EU, to my mind, is one good example. And I think the EOS is looking at ways policy-wise and uh and you know the different approaches to facilitate non-eu infrastructures or short services from participating in eos so i think that's a good example um so i have andrew and then kieran okay thanks mark um hey bob um so the australian answer to your question would be because we want to make australian researchers easy collaboration targets for overseas colleagues so the services that my organization provides are not geo-blocked. Uh, they're open to anyone because we want to make it easy for people to collaborate with Australians. Uh, and opening up our infrastructure, making our data sets discoverable, allowing people to log into our virtual labs, all is in service of that. With respect to what Mark was talking about, one of the things that EOS was working on at the plenary in Helsinki, which seems like an eon ago now, um, was uh, the rules of participation. So they were actually thinking quite hard about what are the rules that govern how non-Europeans get access to EOSC infrastructure. And in fact, they were looking at it from two different perspectives. One was, can non-European researchers use the EOSC um, services uh, and the other one, which is an interesting alternative take, is can non-EOSC service and data providers make their offerings discoverable through EOSC? That is, could you make it easier for someone using EOSC infrastructure to discover an Australian data set or an Australian virtual lab? Uh, and my understanding of the rules of participation, where they landed with that, is that both of those were possible. Uh, and I can see non-nationalist arguments for why that would be desirable. Uh, Kieran? Uh, Kieran, I'm not sure if you're able to unmute. Uh, oh, okay, so Kieran just said is Juno's not uh, keen about the uh, his mic. The, the only way potentially to fix that, Karen, is to go out and come back in again. But having said that, 
if you don't want to do that, feel free to uh, type something into the chat. Um, Dawe, your hands up. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, I, I I have a question. Uh, I think that at the uh, at the first step, the identify comment. I'm wondering if uh, there is a common definition of what the data common is. Now, kind of based on the discussion I heard, you know, like at national level, uh, it seems to have different varieties, and uh, and then there is quite some uh, discussions like say what is the data comment and what is the data ecosystem and like the data ecosystem can be bigger and connect different type of comments so I'm wondering if uh, there's already a great definition of data comment and once that definition is settled and then that we can you know uh, develop the list of, of the comments to be included yeah um, so as Andrew typed in the chat that way the the GORC interest group session tomorrow is a focus on what has been arrived at at a definition um, and also to uh, to further enhance the typology that has been created and in, in fact I think is based partly or largely on the NIH uh, data commons typology um, and I don't know if there's anybody still on the call who could easily put their hands on the infographic that was prepared to that includes the definition uh, of the commons. We might want to put that in there. Although I see Andrew has just typed in uh, the definition. That's the what I, I think is that the full definition or the tagline? Um, it is quite broad. That's, that's the definition, Mark. Okay. So the, the tagline is this, uh, digital research resources for the common good. So I guess that in itself is partly an answer to, to Bob's question of why. And it looks like Kieran is uh, not uh, here in the Juno love, so we may not... Uh, hear Kieran's voice, but uh, Kieran, if you have a chance to type in, uh, we would uh, be interested to hear what you have to say. Any other, just looking at the chat there to get a sense of... Um, um, Mark, could I quickly ask a question uh, for the note taking? Uh, someone spoke about Australia just now, mm -hmm. um, before that way, and I wondered, if they could tell me their names, because I didn't write that down. I think it was Andrew. Uh, Andrew about the ADRC. Thank you. Um, I forgot to pull out Keith's comment, and I don't know if Keith uh, wanted to uh, unmute himself and respond, but the, Keith mentions SCA Research, SKA, uh, which is by its nature international. Did you want to speak to that one, Keith? Yeah. Uh, Keith may be having a problem unmuting as well. Uh, I'm sorry if I could just say one more thing. Um, I'm editing notes on your comments uh, in the common notes um, document. So please, please edit your notes where there's every, anything I missed or oh, misrepresented. Good. I might um, jump in, in, in if we can't get Keith to, uh, if we can't get him uh, his audio on. Um, I can say very much that SCA would be included as part of the um, IVOA. We targeted IVOA as a, as a commons. Uh, to be reviewed independently. So SCA would be very much a part of that, and there would be a whole suite of, of benchmarks associated with SCA, for sure. Um, Karen, do you want to explain what that is for folks that don't know what a square kilometer array is? Yep, the square kilometer array is this uh, massive radio, I believe it's radio astronomy project, uh, international partners um, at um, 
uh, in Australia, the dishes I think are in South Africa with the uh, data management in, in Australia and the project management coming out of Great Britain. Um, uh, there's a proposed new data center um, in Canada. So, so while this, this four kilometer array is one project, uh, I believe that they're falling, they're reusing and using um, IVOA um, standards, International Virtual Observatory Alliance, and creating new, very, very large uh, data management um, structures as well. So I would include that as part of uh, that. But it, the, the, I think it brings up a good point, uh, Keith, is that we're less interested in in projects than we are in terms of the resources, the, the sort of benchmark services that are being made available. Yeah. Um, and I see Dawei has put in another definition of a data commons from Bob Grossman. So that's in the chat there for folks to look at, but essentially it's a data commons uh, co-locates data with cloud computing infrastructure and other commonly used services uh, to facilitate uh, research and interoperability internationally. So that's also a, a good definition, focuses to, in more on the data commons. Um, I think we've moved the definition up a level, if you will, and hence the name Global Open Research Commons. Um, but certainly uh, Bob Grossman's definition fits well. And I see Kieran has also put in his comments. Uh, he's highlighting, I think, was uh, maybe coming back to Bob's question of why and just highlighting that commons have a long lifespan and history. Cross-domain and intra-country collaboration happens over time. So even if it's not a focus today, then convergence of infrastructures is part of the evolution that one either is observing now or can anticipate. Um, so I think Kieran makes a really good point, which is highlighting that now is a good time. And I think that was part of the thinking of uh, the people involved in the early conversations. And I know even in the National Data Services Interest Group context four and five years ago, uh, that this interest in having a greater, whether it's interoperability or uh, some other level of intersection between these different uh, research infrastructures was uh, considered an important development. And he also highlights that, of course, those political challenges uh, can be issues in the current context, but one only has to consider the current pandemic context to highlight both the political realities as well as the, the advantages that a society would see if we did have greater interoperability and collaboration. Uh, Dawe? Yeah, uh, Mark, did you hear any echo from me? No. No, no. good. Okay. So I think uh, actually uh, I have another uh, um, thought. I, I think that uh, uh, related to the the benchmarks uh, that um, so there was a lot of components within the data commons, and they probably have their own. Uh, KPIs. So I'm wondering what what is the benchmark KPIs that uh, you guys are thinking of to benchmark the research comments? That's what this group is intending to to detail. So other than those okay. eleven, uh, other than those eleven that were in the original charter, Dawei, I think it's up to the the different task groups and the larger working group to figure out what those will be. Um, and I would also, for me, it, to some degree, this kind of question was, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the best word. Um, when the, in the NIH Data Commons project, when they uh, created the smart API uh component when i saw that my thought was this is an awesome step in the direction of identifying common or clouds and their disparate services and resources and providing a machine readable um description of that through an api that could then you know be harvested by a 
a common service to create in essence a registry of of commons uh services i don't know if i don't think that smart api project is taken off it was maybe a bit too detailed and required funders and and others to tell programmers what to do when it came to creating an api which is always a challenge um but i would suggest people may want to take a look at that as an example of how we might be able to um to ascribe a fair uh description to to some of these things and we have a the australians and uh they uh our colleagues from the netherlands are having a separate conversation in a, their own language <laughs> <laughs> Um, Karen, did you want to pull anything else out in the yeah. chat? So I, I'll just address uh, Robert's notion that the IVOA, um, in his based on the definition as we've provided it, he doesn't feel that the IVOA is a commons. Um, the IVOA certainly provides a standardizing mechanism for standardizing data discovery and access um but, but because just because the i think it's the notion of shared that that's the sticking point here even if they don't have a shared computational environment they certainly have a computational environment that's usable by their commons members and so the benchmarks are, are intended to identify those services that are available in a commons um, and whether or not they choose to make that interoperable and open outside of their their membership, I think that's a separate question that Andrew alluded to in terms of future rules of play or how do we get involved. Um, but I think identifying that they in fact do have a uh, computational environment with certain features is is valuable because that would be the first step towards deciding whether or not they wanted to make that available uh, to, to people outside of their own commons. Robert, do you, did I, is that off the mark, you think? Um. Slightly. I mean, unless things have changed drastically in the last couple of years since I'm not associated with IVOA anymore. But, um, you know, the IVOA provides these standard protocols for discovering data and accessing data. It provides uh, some organizations in the IVOA provide some uh, services such as image generation and um, spectral analysis. It's, but they are hosted at those organizations and you interact with them, you know, remotely through through web pages and, and, and so forth. So in terms of, you know, being able to move data from one organization to another into a common computational environment, that, that's not what it does. It, it, uh, basically you get data downloaded um, and, and and work with it uh, on your own systems. So that's why it falls a little bit short of, of a comment in the, in the definitions I'm hearing here. On the other hand, it could provide an example of the way things have been done for, I don't know how long, Bob, 20 years? 20 years. 20 years, and maybe there's a potentially more effective or efficient way to to facilitate it. And I still come back to it. And I just was, while you were chatting, Bob, I was looking at the link that uh, Ingrid provided to the EOS project entering the convergence phase. So I certainly would suggest people take a look at that because I think that is partly encapsulating what we're talking about here uh, in the EOS context. Um, but I would come back and and say, you know, if there is a computational service, facility, software uh, framework in a European context that is particularly effective and um, uh, at analyzing the kind of data that is stored in the IVOA as an example. Um, it would seem to me a, a, an opportunity both for the researchers outside the EU context and for the EOSC uh, organization itself to be able to facilitate access to things other than data that it may house, including compute and software services. I think it's uh, I think it's inevitable. Um, 
I think it was Karen who first highlighted to me Microsoft's emerging project to create the planetary computer. Um, we need look no further than the Microsofts and and Amazons and and Googles to see what's happening with shared compute and cloud infrastructure. So if we're not able to embrace that or at least understand how to bring that to our advantage in this uh, research ecosystem, then I think we're missing the, the boat. I also think that the um, the idea in my head behind creating an actual relational database of these benchmarks and commons is that we can look across the commons and say, you know, not all benchmarks or not all features are found in all commons. So it gives a, it gives us an idea to talk about what features are and are not available, um, and also a bit about uh, yeah what's important to our colleagues internationally as they build their structures. Yeah, and Keith makes a really important point that I think as is is our tendency we've we've uh, put off to the side a bit while we we get down into the weeds. Um, his comment is that services in these commons uh, context should be interoperable uh, but you could argue that there would be a great deal of value in alignment between the operations uh, so i think that's a really critical um, comment and aspect of this work and i think it's reflected in at least one of the 11 um, initial uh, benchmarks that uh, are in the charter for the group It's also, I would say, one of the reasons why uh, Bridget uh, invited uh, key contacts from the cloud and commons infrastructures that we initially identified to uh, attend this event, because that partly points to the, at least in the Canadian context, I have a three-part model for describing how, to, how we could collaborate on building a Canadian national data service. And the first level of that three-part model is a conversational context. You know, how do you facilitate this kind of outcome um, without engaging the folks that are building these infrastructures into the conversation? So that's a really important part of what this group is trying to do as well. Um, Natalie, you've got a couple of comments there. Did you want to highlight anything or? or your comments in chat. Based on things, yeah, can you hear me? Yep. I think it might be worth looking, I don't know how, I don't know what the, sorry, timeline for today's discussion is, but um, I mean, this is a good discussion, I, I think because, you know, we, especially different national contexts have different ideas about uh, uh, collaboration and sharing and, and that sort of thing, but maybe we could look at um, how the, how the groups would break down the sort of subgroups because I think that might be an interesting exercise. <laughs> when you were showing the options there on the screen, Karen, I was thinking some of those would be much easier to, to do the work in and some of them would be harder but would probably be more effective in the long run. So mm -hmm. I don't know. And I'm not trying to I didn't I'm not trying to skew things but seeing you ask me Mark <laughs> that's what was going through my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good a good segue and just I think we have 45 minutes. We got about 15 minutes left, I think, to, to chat. And so, yeah, thank you, Natalie. I think that is uh, going to be um, really important in terms of the task groups. I, I, I think, and I, I realize I'm completely biased about this, but in my mind, I think a task, one task group looking at the European Open Science Cloud, one task group looking at African Open Science Platform, et cetera, et cetera with separate task groups, one for the earth sciences, because there is no larger coordinating structure there, and one in the life sciences, um, it would make sense to me. Um, but I'd be interested to hear other folks' thoughts about that. I mean, um, Natalie, when you, when you thought about what would be effective, what did you think would be effective? Well, I was actually thinking that the, I mean, of course, we're going to have to look at what the different commons are doing, right, to understand it. But if the groups only break down that way, then we're not 
working towards how they come together, right? So, like, I, I guess maybe some some skeletal outline of what's in the commons is, is necessary, but then I would say the harder work is how do we then connect those, right? What are the criteria? So, is this the, I think maybe it's the previous slide. The slides are showing up so tiny on my screen for some reason. You can little, expand it. Yeah, it is expanded. It's just still oh. some mini little thumbnail. Um, yeah, but if then we were to look by, I don't know, typology, or deliverable, I mean, we have to figure out what the deliverable is, then you're starting that work of, of the comparative work, which is the, the tough bit, right? Yep. So I think there's, I'm sorry, did I interrupt? Go ahead. No, no, that's it. So I think there's two parts about that. One is that um, as part of um, the, the structure of the database, um, in addition to capturing the benchmarks and the KPIs, um, we can capture implementations of benchmarks in the wild you know so um if there is a structure for um for example if the, if the benchmark is uh, available available uh, the ability to edit uh, a vocabulary you know develop and, and and edit a vocabulary as as we find in the australian data commons um and then we can talk about some of the uh st structures and implementation um, that we found an example exemplar of that. And so that's sort of the very much the operational nuts and bolts of that so as an example of a benchmark. Um, so that begins to say how the, that begins to talk about the characteristics of the actual features as they're implemented and, and that that characterization can lead us to a discussion about how we can make them interoperable. I do think that 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 second piece about what how we we then make the comments interoperable is what the the roadmap for the interest group is, is meant to be developing. So again, this was meant to be in advance of and in support of a larger roadmap that the interest group is developing. Does that answer, does that get at your point, Natalie? I see what you're saying now. That's true. I'm probably conflating the work of um, the, the two groups a little bit because they're both relatively new. Well, things covered there. Um, yeah, so if, if it, I mean, if it's to look, if the groups are looking then by research commons, we just have to make sure our criteria are laid out. Sorry, my brain can't help thinking about when I've done these kinds of groups before and each group goes off and they come back with such a different looking document that then you've got like four entirely different ways of looking at it. So um, just some effort to bring that together. I don't know if Daniel, Ireland's National Open Research Coordinator is on the call, but he has very recent experience of this looking across an Irish landscape. Well, and I think uh, the title of these two slides is potential subtask groups. Mm, so yeah. I, I think that at least from my perspective, the thinking was that we would have more than one mm -hmm. approach. Um, so what I've heard so far, I think Natalie highlighted by typology, Karen by research commons. Um, Anybody else want to speak to this approach to the task groups, either in chat with a plus one for one of the six, suggesting another one, or turning off, turning on your audio and speaking to one? Michelle's highlighting the typology approach uh, as well, and that certainly fits in with the work that the interest group will be doing to finesse and further enhance that typology. Um, so there's two votes for typology. The one uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mark. No, go ahead, Karen. Um, oh, well, I was just, um, if, if, if I heard, maybe I misheard, I heard what I also heard Natalie making a point about was that um, the subtask groups are going to come up with a diversity of sort of reports about what they're seeing in the wild. And to, to the extent that um, earlier discussions about the form, the intake form, um, and the form of the data, the final product itself, I would hope would help harmonize what we're looking at before we get started. And there is meant to be these regular working group meetings where, um, you know, as people propose a benchmark, um, we then discuss it in wordsmith it and, and make it make sure that we're all talking about the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I'm seeing a lot of support for typology. Tamea just highlights, and Tamea was the person who did a lot of the work on the, or uh, most of the work on the EOSC um, piece. Can you go um, back to the typology, uh, the slide, just because to refresh my memory what it was? I don't I think I have a slide on typology. Oh, no, there. Just I just want to see what. OK. And I think, as Andrew highlighted, by typology slash pillars, we could probably combine typology and pillars. The pillars are, in essence, the, the layers in the typology. Um, so those two would probably come together. Tamea, did you want to say anything about the work you're doing for the EOSC? community. You're probably going to do that tomorrow, I suspect, but putting you on the spot. No, if you can, if you can hear me. Um, so yes, there's going to be on Friday a presentation on, on that. Uh, but the work leverages the, actually the, the indicators that um, the land else landscape um, working group has um, has defined. So it's a set of dynamic indicators that would show the, the readiness levels of um, of different countries in getting engaged um, in the EOSC. And we've tried to sort of map those to research communities and adopt a similar approach. So possibly it could be something that, um, that can also be leveraged in your benchmarking group. So, um, I'll put in some links to the to the uh, reports on the indicators if that can be of, uh, of assistance. Yeah, and if you can put a link into the Friday session too, to me, I think there's a yes. few folks that aren't clear on it. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Um, I, so I, I just want to make a point that um, we absolutely want to be make sure that the topology um, is an important sort of organizing structure. Um, I'm thinking more from an operational point of view. We're going to have the documents coming out aren't going to are going to be published by Commons governance structures. So, um, in terms of assigning papers to working groups, um, I think there's there's value in sort of um, each of the task groups getting to know a Commons sort of very intimately. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, but that's interesting, Natalie. I didn't know about this uh, group. Sorry. Um, the other thing that occurs to me, Karen, if if we if we take the by research commons, EOS, AOSP, etc., and we intersect that with the by region, because mm -hmm. there are obviously elements of overlap there, um, and then we kind of merge typology and pillar mm -hmm. um that might be i think based on the conversations i've heard um those may be the two most uh fruitful or supported ones based on the feedback i see in the chat yeah Com commons and region typology and pillar and then again there's this, this sort of appendage of, of the domain um well and we could, we could fall into the pillars then that would make more sense sorry mark go ahead yeah or we could have a third group to focus in on one pillar so for example the earth sciences was a, you know, the example of a domain pillar that we were highlighting yeah um, so that could be a, a third group. I'd be tempted not to go too too much beyond a third group. Um, and Karen's highlighting the social infrastructure components of these architectures, governance models, agreement frameworks. And again, those may themselves, I think, uh, intersect directly with identified benchmarks or metrics. There's no reason why a, a governance model or a document can't be a benchmark.
So any other thoughts on the groups? And then maybe we'll come back to the once people have had, uh, since people have had a chance to think about this a bit, um, we can come back to the workflow. Go ahead, Karen. Well, just that I, I think we're scheduled to stop. Um, and I, if I, unless I'm getting the time zone, unless I'm getting a timer. Um, no, no, I think we have another half hour. Oh, okay. Sorry. At least that's what the, the experts are telling me here. <laughs> So the next obvious question, and I wonder if there's a way, uh, Karen or Alicia, that we could capture this in the notes. Um, can we create a, two sections, one for uh, common slash, I forget what the two mergers we did there. So can we create two sections was maybe below? Sorry? Sorry. Go ahead. No, I think I, what I noted was that you said commons and region merge into one and typology and a uh, pillar. Okay. And then the third one, I disagree. So I'm, I'm tempted to add a two bullet lists before or after the participant sign in with those two titles, at least as a start and ask people to put their names in uh, if they would be interested in participating uh, in more detail on one of those or both of those two mm -hmm. working groups. Does that sound appropriate, Karen? Yeah, that sounds good. On, says, my screen, on my screen, I have an anonymous bat starting to create the groups there. That's me. Okay. <laughs> well, Alicia, do you want to put them as a separate thing or do you want to add another column to the participant sign-in? With the idea oh, that is that what you suggested? I didn't. Yes, I'll add a. Even better. Um, and maybe we can. And in case we don't have them, we should probably capture emails. Although people may have come and gone by then. Um, the idea is that we will start outreach to this group um, with a regular meeting setting up going forward. Hopefully. Yeah. The other thing is we only have a half, I'm guessing a half to a third of the folks that are gathered on the call right? in the actual participants table. Um, yeah, there's easily two to three times that number. Um, so if you could um, put your names, contact info in the participant sign-in sheet, which is on starting down on bottom of page two, um, then you can also indicate. Um, can you still hear me? Is my mic still on? Yeah. Yep. Yes. Um, the idea of putting um, of the uh, categories, the working group, the task groups into the table. I'm just struggling with the idea. I'd have to. They'd have to enter the name, and that would have to fit into the table. So, how would you like to name them, or maybe like have a short acronym? Yeah, because the call the just the columns there are too many by now and it's you're, you're right maybe a, um, I'm just I'm creating a as you started to there uh, Alicia I'm just creating a two two lists above the participant table mm -hmm. um, I'd have to separate tables a table with two columns. that's okay uh, two, yeah. This will work. Uh, commons. What what did we say they were? Commons and commons and regions. Regions. Or national? Or was it national? Uh, oh, national? That's right. That's right. Commons and regions and pillars and topology. Can't type. Um, so if people want to just put names and a last initial, if first name and last initial if needed, as I have here, just to get a start. And um, so if people could add their names there, then as I did, just as an example, um, that will help.
And the other thing we may find ourselves doing as we get further down the road, given the experience we had with the COVID-19 work was um, having additional task groups, whether it's a writing task group or Zotero, whatever seems to make sense. There's also, um, so I think this is good to start capturing people's interest in this. Um, if we were to go back to the proposed workflow that I was thinking about, um, the initial work of the group would actually be done before, there's some initial work that we could do during the working group meeting in advance of being breaking out. So as we have more detailed discussions about the form of the deliverable, um, and a, an initial sort of seed list to get us talking about what the what the benchmarks are um, that could help as well in terms of um, honing people's interest. Um, I'm going to take a look at the um, <clears throat> at the list of participants in case I can um, single anybody else out. Karen, did you want to? Do anything more with the form that Alicia was working on? Did you want to show that or anything else of the detail that we had been discussing? Um, sorry. So I think in, in the, so if we're looking at the form, I think we put a link in the chat. Um, people are welcome to submit dummy sort of um entries at this point um, it, it hasn't gone live but i think we I, if at least you correct me if i'm wrong we're happy to take sort of people taking it out for a test drive to tell us what, what works and what doesn't work um but the i the general idea is that people could submit a source document that needed to be reviewed so if something came across my desk that i felt like would be of value to one or one of the task groups that i could submit that um source um we could the form is designed to take in a benchmark um your, your option it's an optional to have a benchmark associated uh, to have a kpi associated with a benchmark um, it's also optional to have an implementation of a benchmark or an exemplar um so they're they're fairly it's a fairly module mod, modular sort of um setup um and on the the database itself, I had this uh, general idea that the the feature or the benchmark, um, you know, that there, there, there would be a name of a feature. Um, it would be associated with a commons, maybe. Um, that it uh, we would have a source for where we derive that feature if it came out of a paper or a discussion. Um, that we have an implementation of a benchmark uh that the uh and then possibly a kpi um this kpi question i think is an open question um i i'm assuming that the, that the kpi would out of necessity be tied to a benchmark um but we've left the structure so that a kpi didn't necessarily have to be tied to a benchmark and i don't know if that works or not um but i, I feel like those that's a sort of a weedy sort of discussion that I would anticipate the first sets of uh, working group meetings would start to tease those out. Um, Thanks, Karen. Yep. Um, so at the risk of, of calling on folks that don't want to say anything, um, I'm going to pick on two colleagues that I see in the list that are uh representing uh other um research infrastructures or commons that we haven't heard from just to get your thoughts on this task that we're proposing to embark on here so if i i'm going to call on two people and if you don't want to say anything then just uh let me know in chat or audio i have monica larcy from the nordic a group and Amber Burden from the Data uh, Data One uh, community. 
uh, would uh, did either one of you care to comment on given how close you are to these examples of infrastructures whether this is something that's going in a direction that's of interest from your perspective hi so monica lassie here uh yes i think this is of interest to NAIC. this is the nordic e infrastructure collaboration so we're quite new in this context of of um combining research data and e infrastructure in a more uh, in this way in this context. So right now, uh, I, I kind of have to take this to my colleagues uh, to discuss more how we can contribute. And and uh, but I, I do think it sounds very very relevant and will definitely uh, uh, try to get this uh, so that we can collaborate and, and take active part in this. Okay, thanks, Monica. Thanks. Uh, Amber, did you want to comment? I know data one is a special use case, but it's um, it's a number of the points. Sorry, I just uh, um, reading her chat uh, message said she's multitasking with kids. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I didn't see that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I know the feeling. So. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, did you want to comment on anything other than Amber's? To, uh, no, from, I mean, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it, this is a, um, a it will be, this is a, a valuable um, exercise. I think it can help encourage different countries and regions to, um, uh, you know, advance their infrastructure and also um, identify, you know, where their priorities are. Um, like Robert said earlier, I think the national contexts are very different depending on, you know, what country you're in. Um, also, especially in developing countries, the infrastructure looks very different in developing countries around all of this. So I think it would be important to make sure that it, it, this wasn't only developed from a very rich northern perspective, that there are some of those benchmarks reflect the context of developing countries as well. But but all in all, I think it's a it's it's an, a good it's going to be something that contributes to the whole yeah, ecosystem. Yeah. And no, that's, a, that's a good set of um, remarks, one about uh, the developing versus you know, more advanced infrastructures, we definitely want the benchmarks to reflect every stage of the maturity of the infrastructures. Um, there's also, there also is the the, the language um, barrier. Um, and so part of what we want to be able to make sure that, I think this is Mark and I's responsibility is that to, um, to reach out, to make sure that we have a full representation. Um, and but that was part of why we, uh, in advance of this had created this target list of contacts um, so that you know after this after this meeting you know we can uh, send some targeted emails to folks that we are familiar with um, and see if they if they they're willing to participate yeah no uh, agreed 100 percent and um, I know in the Canadian context we're in that kind of transition period as Karen uh, well knows between uh, older or long-standing, I should say, Canadian organizations such as Compute Canada and, and Portage and others that are transitioning into this new national uh, digital research infrastructure organization or Endrio as we call it. And I think it's safe to say that Endrio has a great deal of interest as it defines itself and um, you know, gets a, a full team in place and active hiring mode and all those kinds of things. That intersecting at the global level has been identified as a critical interest. Um, so that's one comment from the Canadian context. The other one, um, and I know Michelle may want to comment on this as well, but in the Canadian context for the last couple of years, in talking about a similar exercise nationally, we adopted the EOSC, what I call the six-part EOSC model, uh, which is the uh, has six components, architecture, data, 
services, access and interface rules and governance. And I found that was a resonated quite strongly, at least for me. And eventually, I think with a lot of colleagues in the Canadian community of touching on all the various typological elements, if you will, uh, from all the way from architecture up to governance. And it really helped us focus in on the conversation. Um, having said that, in the early days, people would look at the model and go, well, what about training or what about this? Or um, So there, certainly in the early days, there's a tendency to, to finesse or um, argue over the details of the model or typology that you're going to use. But I think it's important at some point to do that, agree to the model and, um, and get down to the details. Um, so we certainly found that um, six part model useful uh, that EOS had developed. Can I, can I add another thing? Because I think um, what I mentioned before was like less, you know, developing versus developed countries. But I think the other distinction between the regions or countries is how top down or coordinated they are at the national level. So for example, if you look at the states, it's very distributed, maybe according to discipline rather than a, a top-down infrastructure like now mm -hmm. is being developed in Canada and, and like the EOSC. So there's going to be different constraints and challenges depending on what kind of um, organizational or governance environment you're in, I think, as well. Yeah, indeed. I don't know if um, Amber and I were having a side conversation about um, uh, her views on how data one might fit into the conversation. Amber, did I, um, and you may still be multitasking, which is <laughs> probably why we want you involved, you, you have those skills. Um, but I hear you when you say data one is open source, but does not provide compute uh, computational capabilities. Um, I, I don't think of data ones as a commons, but I do think that the services that data one provides um, are, are benchmarks that would be found in a yeah. commons. Um, yeah. And so you, and you're continuing to talk about the uh, standards that would be found in different parts. Um, yeah, I, I, I think all that's fair. Yeah, Absolutely. I, I think that, um, you know, there, there can be lessons learned from the process that we've taken and, and we're very embedded within the the community standards to enable that interoperability that we have um, within Data One. I, I was just noting that the focus on global participation is important to us. It was always a, a vision um, and an intention and we do have, you know, nominally a global network, but we are largely US based. And, and so I think that is a, you know, an appropriate and, and needed um, focus. And, and I do think that, you know, data one can be an exemplar, you know, an implementation of certain benchmarks, um, because you've got this mature infrastructure that relies on open source technology, it could be a really nice set of um, description or real world in the wild sort of examples of benchmarks that we're looking at. Well, and, the, and that to me points to one of the potentially long-term advantages of this work. And that is that if somebody wants the, if somebody's building a national uh, infrastructure um, and they don't have that uh, data repository capacity or the other kinds of services that Data One provides, if as, as Amber has suggested, Data One facilitates integration in multiple contexts, domain or national infrastructures, then that ability to highlight those functions that data one provides and that it is accessible in a national research commons kind of federated or integrated context that, you know, that's a perfect example of how we could potentially address Kathleen's comment about being careful about not setting the bar too high. And to my mind, it's, it's not that, but it's rather describing the the ecosystem uh, clearly enough that national organizations that don't currently have a particular kind of functionality can take from uh, the typology and the outputs of this and other groups to more quickly build 
uh, the kinds of infrastructures that are needed to participate internationally. So I think that's another thing that we should bear in mind that uh, this effort could facilitate a more rapid uh, spin up of these kinds of infrastructures. Uh, any other thoughts or comments? Karen, did you want to, any other kind of details or specifics that you would like to get out of the conversation? Um, I think, that, you know, I, I have an eye towards uh, operationally what we're going to do next. And I think, you know, that's a matter of standing up. Well, it depends on where we are. So for, for those of you who are joining us late, we had an original submission of the case statement after the BOF to become a working group. Um, we got some really valuable uh, feedback from RDA about how to improve that case statement. We've improved and resubmitted that case statement. Um, I don't think we've been endorsed yet officially. And so there is that. Um, I'm sort of optimistic that we will be. Um, and so the next task would be to stand up to, to figure out based on the um, interest that are expressed during this meeting and the repeat session that's going to happen on Friday, um, who we can create a mailing list and uh, start to start creating a standing meeting to start getting organized. I think that's sort of operationally where I am. Um, yeah. yeah. And I'm not sure if our colleague from Juno is still on the call, but do we, is it easy to get the list of folks that did sign up and or log into the session to, so we can contact everybody afterwards? She's probably, oh, there's Bridget. Yeah, hi, Mark, I can get those analytics for you after the session. Okay, thanks, Thank Bridget. You. Andrew, were you going to comment on the charter? No, I was going to um, answer the question Bridget asked. Uh, I actually thought all we could get was the list of people who said they were going to attend. But if we can get the people who actually attended, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I think it was, a, I mean, it, it was more than had initially signed up. And I think it was a, what I liked about the just looking at, glancing at the participants is that it's a very diverse cross-section, which ideally represents the kind of cross-section we would want involved in uh, some of the more detailed efforts. And I'm also sensitive to Monica's comment about going back to her colleagues in her context to get a sense, give them a sense of what we talked about and how they would engage. So I think um, with a additional uh, contact after this, Karen, we'll probably grow those um, those two task groups appropriately. Um, just highlight, Bob put in Bob's last comment regarding embarrassing the U.S. sufficiently. I don't know. I don't know about that, Bob, but let's see what we can do. <laughs> it, it, it would help a lot because... Uh, <laughs> It, it really is a sad state of affairs right now, and um, I've been working through some political channels to try to uh, raise awareness, but uh, having a list of capabilities and other countries, other national commons are providing would, would actually be helpful in this regard. Yeah. Well, and one of the things I always have in the back of my mind as both a funder and a and a facilitator of the conversation is sustainability. And I know in the case of the Canadian uh, emerging Canadian National Data Services framework, at various points I had highlighted um, both Data One and OSF as um, very rich and um, well designed and and uh, you know good profile examples of data sharing frameworks um, and would it have been possible would it be possible to integrate those into a Canadian national data services framework for example rather than recreating those particular bits of functionality from scratch um, 
and I think we, we probably have what represents that functionality in what's known as the FERTER uh, Federated Research Data Repository component of the NDSF, but that's the kind of example that I think um, can vastly improve our ability to ramp up and provide researchers with the infrastructure they need if each of us doesn't have to recreate uh, the wheel every time for these different uh, commons components. Okay, well, um, unless anybody has anything else, Karen, I would say that um, uh, the job is done. I, I do have one question. Is it possible to have a uh, transcript of the chat? Yes, good point. I've been ask, wondering about that myself. Because I did just get kicked off the room. <laughs> I uh, um, uh, lost, uh, and I couldn't have copied it anyway. It was not possible to just highlight and copy. No. Right. Yeah, no, you can't copy anything from the chat, but um, I can get the question and answers. And I believe also the chat in the analytics as well. Thank you. Yeah, that chat is very rich. I'm sure that would be useful for Alicia as well as others. So I think in terms of next steps, Mark, the idea is that we'll rerun the session again on Friday um, and uh, review our notes, but then set up a mass email to yeah. folks here and to other folks that we might want to reach out with an invitation to an initial meeting. Is that is that fair? Yeah, no, that's uh, that's perfect. And I, I, sh I was going to do this initially, but um, I should have highlighted at the beginning that uh, all of this work has been done by Karen, uh, joined more recently by Alicia. So certainly I wanted to highlight Karen's efforts here and um, the work that she and Alicia and others do in the World Data System, the in International Technology Office. Um, so I didn't want to take any credit for what <laughs> had been done because it's all been about, uh, it's all been uh, work that Karen in particular uh, and more recently, Alicia have put in. So yeah. thanks for I, that. I appreciate it, but you're underselling your contributions here. And um, I, I do think we work really well with the broader interest group um, and uh, some of the clarity that Mark has on the on, on a lot of components of this. His thought process is, is really, I couldn't do it without him. So um, no, I think, it, I think it works well. Um, uh, I, do we need to do anything in terms of the RDA Secretariat in terms of our application to become a working group work? Um, yeah, Andrew or Bridget may want to comment, but given the comments I saw coming back from TAB on the initial draft charter, um, I think it was simply a matter of addressing the comments, which I think you've done. Um, so, Andrew, I suspect it's a case of TAB looking at that and then that going to council before it's approved. Yeah, so essentially um, TAB will look at the way in which you've responded to the comments and uh, either say, no, try again, try harder next time, uh, which I think is highly unlikely if Karen was the person who was addressing the comments, uh, <laughs> or, or we'll say uh, to council, yep, they've addressed all of our concerns, we recommend that you, you proceed. Um, so it would then depend on when it goes to council. Yeah, so we'll, um, I'll track that one through the process, Karen, but I think we should at least get the next steps queued up uh, okay. once the P17 dust settles. Yep, that sounds good. Um, okay, yeah. well, last, last word to you, Karen. Nothing, just that we're in a very fortunate spot that due to um, some funding from the government of Canada, I was a I am able to dedicate um, both my time and um, Alicia, who works in my office, for those of you who haven't met her, I think this is her first meeting here. Um, so she's going to be doing a lot of the organizing, organizational stuff. Um, so if you if you hear from her, that's what that's going on. And so I think we're in a good place um, to really make a, a, an effort here. All right. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Alicia. And thanks, everybody, for attending. Uh, we will be in touch. And if you didn't put your name in, to the table and you want to make sure that we have contact with you after then please take the time to do that now all right thanks everyone
Thanks. Bye.